financial management investment appraisal section so in the investment appraisal section what are the things that you should know so the first area is the foundation for the investment appraisal so in this foundation for the investment appraisal you should know most of the areas from the management accounting so what are those areas one is maybe compounding so in compounding you know what's the equation that you can find out if you have a compound interest the future value equals present value into 1 plus r to the power n so different different people might have studied different different formulas but the concept is same if you invest some amount today at the sum rate for some number of period in future what will be your value so these these english letters can be replaced with anything right so if you want you can use p if you want you can use q whatever the letter you can use here but the concept is same then next is the discounting so when it's come to the discounting what is discounting in simple terms if i am telling you finding the present values of cash flows so under the discounting you have main three areas what are the three areas one is the single sum discounting single value discounting and if you have the same value for all the years which means the annuity annuity and you have the perpetuity if you are getting the cash flows for the foreseeable future so how to calculate the present values of these things so if it is a single sum okay you can find out the present value by multiplying your cash flow from the discounting factor if you have the same value which is the annuity how to calculate the total present value so here you can calculate the total present value cash flow into discounting factor of year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 likewise you can take all the years and if you take the addition you will get the total present value and if you are having the same cash flow every year how you can calculate the total present value that same cash flow if not the common cash flow into the annuity factor you will get the total present value and the next one is the perpetuity so if you are getting some cash flows for the foreseeable future how to calculate the present values so it is total present value do keep in your mind so this formula the cash flow of the year one divided by r it will give you the total present value from year one to perpetuity if not if you are having a growth in the cash flows how to find out the total present value from year one to perpetuity cash flow of year zero or year one if you take year one you are not required to take one minus g if you take year zero's cash flow immediate years cash flow you can take one minus g so let's take this one cash flow of the year one divided from r minus g so these are certain things that you have to know when it's come to the discounting and apart from that if there are any cash flows which you are getting immediately how to do the calculation so if it is an annuity factor you know annuity factor will assume uh, you are getting the same cash flow for five years or for five times the first payment is immediately so how you can get the annuity factor you can take the annuity factor from year one to year four and year zero you can add it separately so year zero's discounting factor it is one so one plus annuity factor of year one to four will give you the annuity factor from year zero to this will give you year zero to year four if not sometimes you will have a question okay the first cash flow you will get maybe first year you will not get anything second year you will not get anything from the third year only you will get your cash flows okay so you will get your cash flows let, let's assume year three year four and year five only so if that's the case how you can take the annuity factor so you can take the annuity factor of year one to five but out of that year one and two you are not getting anything from year three onwards only you are getting some cash flows so annuity factor of year one to two can be removed so what's the annuity factor that you are getting annuity factor from year three to year five so using this one you can do the calculation 
so these are the certain things that you should know when it comes to the discount and the next one that you should know when we are appraising an investment normally why we are using cash flows over profits so cash flows versus the profits so here simply what you should know is certain limitations of the profit so you know the profits can be manipulated the profits are subjective so these are certain limitations that you can incorporate where you can say cash flows cannot be manipulated and cash should be there either bank or physically so you can cross check those things okay and dividend can be paid only by the cash so that's why normally we are preferring cash flows over profits when we are appraising an investment and the next one is when you are appraising an investment there are certain relevant cash flows relevant items are there and there are certain not relevant items are there not relevant items are there so what are the relevant items and what are the not relevant items first one is you have to take only the cash items only the cash flows non cash flows you shouldn't take and the next one is you have to take only the future cash flows the past ones you shouldn't take and you have to take only the specific ones specific cash flows the cash flows which is specific for the investment if not the incremental incremental cash flows you shouldn't take the general ones general ones or the common ones like overheads you shouldn't take and apart from that if you are getting some any savings because of the particular investment if you are getting some savings so you are investing in a certain project to save your cost so savings will be considered as cash cash inflows do keep that in your mind and if you are incurring some extra cost like opportunity cost like opportunity cost because of your investment let's assume there is a labor you are taking the labor from the existing project for your new project so if that's the case the labor will not be able to work on the existing project so there will be some loss of contribution or loss of profits because you are taking the labor so that loss of contribution or profit is arising because of what because of your new investment right so opportunity cost should be considered normally the opportunity cost will be considered as cash outflows cash outflows and apart from that you shouldn't take the committed cost the cost which is committed you shouldn't take for the calculation purpose and the second one that you should know now we are done with the foundation part the second one that you should know the methods the methods of appraising an investment appraising an investment so what are the methods that you have actually i would like to focus on four methods two methods i would say discounted cash flow methods and other methods so what are the discounted cash flow methods one is the npv and other one is the ir under other method i would like to take one is the arr if not the accounting rate of return if not ros roce and the next one is the payback period so in npv how you can take a decision if the npv is positive you will accept if it is negative reject if it is zero it depends irr also how to take the decision if the irr is bigger than the rate that you are getting you will accept it if the irr is smaller than the rate that you are getting you will reject it if the irr is equals again it depends and the next one is arr if not roc so in roc also you are comparing your expected arr with the arr that you are getting by doing the calculation and the payback period also same you will have to compare your expected payback period versus the the payback period that you are getting by doing the calculation so if i am giving you some further elaboration on how to calculate the arr just to remind you so you have to take the average profit before interest and tax if not the operating profits divided from the average investment so how you can take the average investment is your investment amount plus the scrap value divided by 2 
and with regarding each method we learn certain advantages and disadvantages for each method for each method advantages disadvantages so what are the advantages are there in the NPA method it is considering the time value for money it is taking the cash into the consideration and it is considering the entire life of the project but disadvantage of the NPA method is sometimes the number calculation can become complex it can be difficult to explain to certain managers what is this NPV method is so again what are the advantages of IRR IRR one is again it is taking the time value for money into consideration it is taking the cash flows into consideration it is taking the whole life of the project into consideration so what are the disadvantages of IRR method one thing is IRR is a relative measure we will call NPV is absolute measure so by looking at the final result of the NPV if the NPV is positive we will accept if the NPV neg negative, we will reject. But IRR is not like that. You have to compare the IRR with the rate and only you can take the decision. So IRR is a relative measure. And apart from that, one another disadvantage is again explaining what is this present values of the cash flows. It is little difficult for the managers. And let's come to the next one. The ARR. What are the advantages of ARR? It is calculating a percentage. So you can compare it and see and it is taking the entire life of the project into consideration. So what are the disadvantages of ARR? The biggest disadvantage is it is taking profit into consideration, not the cash flows. So next one is the payback period. So what are the advantages in payback period? It is a very simple method where anyone can understand. If you take the disadvantages of payback period, like it is not considering the cash flows after the project recovery is happening like once the payback is over after the payback whatever the cash flows that you are getting it is not considered like the entire life of the project is not considered and the present value of the cash flows are not considered likewise certain disadvantages are there in the payback period method and if i am little elaborating another disadvantage which is there in the irr method which is the conventional cash flows and non-conventional cash flows so if you are having conventional cash flows year zero negative then you are having the positive values the conventional cash flows probably you will get one irr but if you are having non-conventional cash flows like negative positives again negative again positives like non-conventional cash flows it can lead to multiple irr sometimes you can have maybe two irrs also sometimes you can have maybe one irr like this sometimes you may have zero irr also so non-conventional cash flows can lead to multiple irr so irr means it's the rate at which npv becomes zero you just think and see at five percent also NPV becomes zero at ten percent also NPV becomes zero so if the if the capital can be obtained at the rate of maybe let's assume eight percent are we going to accept the project or reject the project there is a problem right because according to this rate you are this particular project seems to be expensive but according to this rate this particular project seems to be cheaper like it will generate a positive NPA so there will be a problem if there are multiple IRRs normally out of these four methods what we are telling normally discounted cash flow methods are superior methods than other methods because it is taking the time value for money into consideration and due to other advantages which is there in the discounted cash flow methods then the next one is NPV and IRR if you look at the NPV and IRR normally we are preferring NPV over IRR because of the certain advantages that NPV has such as NPV is an absolute measure the next area that you should know it's the third one which is advanced NPV calculation so in advanced NPV calculation, what are the things that you should know? First one is the Fisher's equation. What is that equation? 1 plus I equals 1 plus R into 1 plus H. So I means the money rate, R is the real rate, H is the inflation. So I would like to replace these words with different terminologies. I would say R is the not inflated rate. 
this not inflated rate once you inflate it with using the inflation what you will get you will get the inflated rate we will call this one as the money rate money rate if not we will call it as the nominal rate if not another name that i would like to use it is inflated inflated rate and the next thing is when you are doing a npv calculation if you are having the real cash flows if not i would like to say not inflated cash flows always you have to use always you have to use the real rate if not in other words i would like to say not inflated rate and if you are going to do the npv calculation using the nominal nominal cash flow if not another name for that money cash flow another name that i would use inflated inflated cash flow if that is the case you have to use nominal rate another name for nominal rate we could name it as money rate if not another name that i would like to use the inflated the inflated rate in your exam if they ask you to do a npv calculation using the real method by giving some specific rates how you should do the calculation there are certain step that you should follow first step is inflate inflate the cash flows using the specific rate again i'll repeat the question they are asking you to do the calculation using the real method but certain specific inflation rates are given so you should inflate the cash flows using the specific rate and you should deflate the deflate the cash flows using the general rate then next one you can get the present values and you have to find the present values find the present values and npv using the real rate so these are the steps that you should follow if they ask you to do the calculation using the real rate by giving some specific inflation so inflate the cash flows using the specific rate deflate the cash flows using the general rate then find the present values and npv using the real rate when it come to the advanced npv calculation you should know how to deal with the tax so when it come to the tax there are two types of adjustments are there one is the tax payment and other one is the tax saving tax saving on depreciation tax saving on depreciation so how to calculate the tax saving your depreciation amount into the tax percentage so normally tax saving will be an inflow for the npv calculation tax payment will be an outflow for the npv calculation next adjustment that you should know when it come to the advanced npv calculation which is the working capital adjustment so now let me give you the format that you should use to do the npv calculation you can start with the sales after the sales you can take the variable cost and if you are having any fi specific fixed cost you can take it so make sure to inflate these whatever the cash flows if they have given the specific rates then if you deduct these two from the sales you will get the taxable cash flow for the taxable cash flow you have to pay tax so tax is going to be a cash outflow so here the tax payments if they are saying arrears year 1 tax will be paid in year 2 year 2 tax will be paid in year 3 that's how you have to pay and apart from that with regard in the tax you can take the tax saving so tax saving again it's going to be a cash inflow to you so tax saving also same if the tax is paid one year arrears so first year saving will be realized in year 2 year 2 saving will be realized in year 3 so that's how you have to get it and apart from that you have the working capital adjustment and apart from you have the investment cost and apart from you have the scrap so by taking all these things you can take the net cash flow then you can find out the present value and the npv 
so when you are finding the npv using the excel what's the equation that you should use equals npv open the brackets use the rate let's assume the rate is 10 percent put a comma then you have to select the cash flows year 0 year 1 year 2 year 3 cash flows from year 1 onwards don't select the year 0 so you will have some cash flows for the range so select it from year 1 onwards then close the brackets then what you should do finally adjust finally adjust the year 0 cash flows which is the amount that you are getting over here finally adjust that amount properly so when you are adjusting that amount if you have taken this one as a negative value don't go and negative again because it will become a plus value so if you have already taken a negative value make sure to add it so you will get the perfect npv the next one that you should know which is lease versus buy so you will have to take addition when it's come to the lease versus buy so do keep in your mind lease versus buy means you are not going to take the investment decision investment decision means are you going to invest or not so once you decide to invest in a particular project if not once you decide to purchase a certain asset we will have to decide are we going to lease the asset or are we going to buy the asset so out of these two we will have to find out what is the best option is so when it's come to the lease particular npv calculation what are the things that you have to consider one is the rental payment is something that you have to consider and you have to consider the tax saving on rent so how to calculate that rent into the tax percentage and next one you have to take percent value and the npv for that particular option which is lease and for the buy what are the things that you have to consider when it's come to the buy you have to take the buy cost if not the investment amount then next you have to take the scrap value is something you have to take and you can take the tax saving on depreciation so depreciation into the tax percentage then you can take the present values and the npv so out of these two options you have to find out what is the lowest cost for you let's assume for the lease option you are getting a negative npv of thousand for the buy option you are getting a negative npv of thousand two hundred so what does this negative npv means in today's value term if you are going for the lease option what will be your cost what is the meaning of this thousand two hundred in today's value term if you are going for the buy option what will be your cost so in today's value term if you are going for the lease option your cost will be only thousand rather than thousand two hundred so for you it is better to proceed with the lease option that's how you can take the decision the next one that you should know which is the eac and eab eac means equivalent annual cost eab means equivalent annual benefit so in eac we will try to find out what is the optimum replacement cycle is when you are having an asset how regularly we will have to replace the asset normally what people are thinking if you can use an asset for a longer period it is actually good that's what people are thinking but that's not the actual case because when the asset is becoming older let's take a van you might think okay if i can use the van for 15 years that's better rather than uh, replacing the van once uh, once in two years but the thing that you have to understand if you are planning to use the van for 15 years when the number of years are moving on your depreciation will be higher right of the vehicle if it is higher the maintenance cost is high the fuel consumption will be lower so running cost will be high so you will have to incur these kind of cost in a higher scale but if it is a new vehicle the maintenance cost is low your running cost is low so sometimes replacing a vehicle once in two years will be better than replacing the vehicle once in 15 years and other factor that you have to consider is if you replace once in two years the value that you are getting when you are selling the asset after the usage will be high rather than selling the asset after 15 years so these are certain things that you have to consider when it's come to the replacement cycle so how to find out the equivalent annual cost eac 
it is the NPV that you are getting you have to divide it from the annuity factor so whatever the option which is giving you the lowest EAC is what that you have to proceed with so EAC will give you an answer what's the meaning of that answer is actually what is the amount that you are going to spend on average for a year if you go for that particular replacement cycle so that's the EAC means and EAB is the other way around it is equivalent annual benefit on average for a year how much is the benefit that you are generating so if you are planning to uh, take a decision based on the EAB you have to go for the higher number that you are getting next one that you should know which is the capital rationing capital rationing means the capital is limited so it can happen due to two reasons one is the hard capital rationing other one is the soft capital rationing hard capital rationing means you can't find out or you can't get the funds that you need from the external factors here soft capital rationing means you can't get the funds from the internal factors I am giving you an example for hard capital rationing maybe uh, like financial institutions they are not willing to give you the money that you want this is maybe due to the poor track record that your business has if not because of your poor skill of the management so because of these things the outsiders will not willing to lend the money to for your business sometimes that industry that you are in if your industry is a very risky industry the outsiders the financial institutes will not lend the money that you want and next one is the soft capital rationing inside the company itself they are limiting the funds available for the investment purpose why companies will do this because they want to get the maximum out of what whatever the money that they have so they will try to create a competition between the departments between the divisions to get the investment that they want so all the divisional managers all the department managers they will put forward the best investment option that they have so as a higher level management what they are planning to do here they are trying to find out the best they are trying to get the best from the investment that they are going to do best from the money that they have come to the capital rationing when it's come to the numbers if the projects are divisible projects divisible projects means you can divide the project into pieces you have to use the method profitability index so how to calculate the profitability index one is NPV divided from the investment amount if not the present value divided from the investment amount so this is one method that you can use other one is indivisible project so if it is an indivisible project what you should do to find out the optimum investment schedule you have to go for a trial and error method finally you have the risk and uncertainty with investment appraisal so all the calculations that we are doing in the investment appraisal those are expectations so sometimes those numbers can change so this risk and uncertainty will come into the equation so what are the certain types what are the certain methods that we are going to take the risk into consideration such as maybe expected values and probabilities so what is the probability of getting a certain cash flow what's the probability of uh, incurring a certain cost what's the probability of getting a certain NPV so when it's come to the probability calculation the one of the important calculation is the joint probability calculation so when it comes to joint probability calculation there are certain steps that you should follow in order to get the answer the step number one is you should find out you should find out all the possible possible scenario scenario so I am telling you year one you will get hundred thousand that is a fifty percent chance if not you will get 150,000 this is 60% this is 40% year 2 you will get 200,000 that is 60% if not you will get 250,000 that is 40% so what are the possible outcomes that you have what are the possible scenarios that you have year 100,000 and year 2 200,000 that is a possible scenario if not you will have year 100,000 and year 2 250,000 that is a possible scenario year 1 150,000 year 2 maybe 200,000 if not year 1 150,000 
year to 250,000. So here see for this particular question how many possible scenarios are there? Four possible scenarios are there. So once you identify the, all the possible scenarios what you should do? You should find out the NPVs of all the possible scenarios. So to find out the NPVs you should know the present values of all the possible scenarios. So how to get the present values by taking the discounting factor and these cash flows into consideration. So you should find out next the NPV of all the possible scenario. NPV. NPV of all the possible scenario. Then second one find the NPV of all the possible scenarios and the third one you have to get the joint probability how to get the joint probability probability of the first outcome into the second outcome so here probability of getting 100,000 is 60 percent probability of getting 200,000 is 60 percent so 60 percent into 60 percent 36 percent is the joint probability that you are getting so here probability of getting 100,000 is 60 percent probability of getting 250,000 is 40 percent so 60 percent into 40 percent how much is that 24 percent so the joint probability is 24 percent so what are the meanings of this 36 percent there is a 36 percent chance you will get this particular NPV there is a 24 percent chance you will get this particular NPV and if you want to find out the expected values of the NPV what you should do you should multiply the NPVs from the joint probability then you will get the expected values by taking the all the expected values of all possible outcomes you can take the total of the expected values. so this is how you can do a joint probability calculation you have the sensitivity it's another method the sensitivity how to find the sensitivity you can divide the NPV from the present value of the variable present value of the variable so if you want to find out the sensitivity of the sales volume what's the formula the NPV divided from the present value of contribution if you want to find out the sensitivity of the sales NPV divided from the present value of the sales so that's how you can find out the sensitivity so what you have to understand if the percentage is lower the sensitivity is high so let's take an example sales has a sensitivity of 2% and the variable cost has a sensitivity of 10% so which factor is highly sensitive for the NPV which is the 2% sales. So what's the meaning of this 2% sales? If your sales changes from 2% there is a chance where your NPV can go to 0. But here what's the meaning of 10%? Your variable cost has to increase from 10% a higher amount. A 10% increment in order to your NPV to become 0. So what you have to keep in your mind when your sensitivity percentage is low that means the sensitivity is high and next you have the simulation simulation is a technique that we are using to simulate the numbers and we are getting multiple outcomes using a computer system and we will plot all the probabilities in the histogram and using the probabilities we will try to find out the best possible scenario for us so this entire simulation will happen through a computer software simulation one of the biggest advantage which is there is which is not there in the sensitivity in sensitivity we are considering only one variable changes at a time but simulation we are considering multiple variable changes at a time you have the certainty equivalent approach certainty equivalent approach what you will do is you will reduce the expectations that you have with regard in the cash flows if you are expecting a 5000 cash flows you will reduce this for 3000 because of the risk involved in that so you are reducing your expected cash flows and you are reducing your expectations by taking these reduced cash flows and the uh, whatever the risk free rate you will find out the NPV and you will take the decision this one is the risk adjusted discount rate so based on the risk of the particular project we have to adjust the discount rate and we have to find the present value using that particular risk adjusted discount rate so this is a complete summary or express summary of the section which is investment appraisal so if i am giving you a quick snap of that particular section so the first part that we learn which is the foundation under foundation we learn the compounding and discounting single sum annuity and the perpetuity then we moved into the investment appraisal methods you have discounted cash flow methods other methods so under discounted cash flow npv irr 
under other methods ARR, payback period. So we learn the advantages, disadvantages, and the rule. So we learn all these things. Then we moved into advanced NPV calculation in that we learn how to deal with the Fisher's equation and if it is a real cash flow, if it is a money cash flow, how to do the calculation, how to deal with the taxation, two parts, tax payments and tax saving. Then we move to the working capital. So by taking all these things, what's the format is, then we move to the lease versus lease versus buy then replacement decision eac and we move to the next one the capital rationing then we learn how to incorporate the risk and uncertainty into the investment appraisal calculation using the methods such as sensitivity expected values and probabilities simulation simulation certainty equivalent approach risk adjusted discount risk adjusted discount rate so this is a quick summary of the section which is investment appraisal